Hi, everybody. I'm Diane Brady. I'm here with Gare Dwani, who is, of course, actor, model, author. Um, your, um, I, actually, I have your book, Walk Toward the Rising Sun. It's, 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 um, it's now de rigueur in the schools. So you were, I know you're an ambassador to the UN High Commission for Refugees. And of course, you were yourself a refugee, one of the lost boys, a child soldier in South Sudan. Now you're in the impact investing realm. So before we get to that, give me a sense of, of your mindset right now, because I believe there's currently more refugees than at any time in human history. You were a refugee yourself to the U.S. at 15. What, why are we not addressing this issue? Is it just volatility? Do you have any thoughts yourself? Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts. And, um, but we have to start somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Uh, well, m thank you so much for actually inviting me here. And, of course. Uh, thank you for coming. With you. It means a lot. And I'm sure it means a lot for a lot of people who are refugees somewhere else. Uh, my name is Gare Duane. Yes, I'm from South Sudan. And um, I came to the United States early in 1994. And then I grew up in Bloomington, Indiana. Went mm -hmm. to high school there and I played basketball. And to a point where I went to University of Bridgeport in Connecticut. Yeah. Yeah, which led me all the way to New York City because it's not that far. So I have encountered a lot of battles in my life, especially from a previous civil war in Sudan. I was one of the child soldiers and then I was a refugee and I was separated from my mother and my father for 18 years until South Sudan became independent. So when people talk about refugees, you know, it's something, it's a story that always attached with me, you know. <clears throat> my life is being is dictated by those issues. It dictates those Too issues. Too much so? Yeah. Do you feel like it's stuck with you to the point where it's hard to move on, or do you, do you embrace it still? I embrace it. Of... I embrace it in the sense of, because uh, my journey is always attached to learning and education. And throughout all this uh, transition that I was making and surviving alone, I was learning. So I can't, I, when I look back, it's like my education come from, from those experiences, and which is why I share them. Whether I'm making a movie and then I'm sharing something. Oh, I love I Huckabees, know. I heart Huckabees. <laughs> I, I remember you from that. Yeah, that, that was a funny one. But, but <laughs> talk about, I mean, there's an instinct toward philanthropy. There's, there's obviously policy, you know, you know UNHCR and, and support. What's the investing component? What, what is it we can do better to be addressing this or any of the other issues? I know a lot of it's around climate change and ESG. Yes, yes. What do you think the opportunity is? I think there's a lot of opportunity, you know, uh, especially having technology and, uh, and, and, and that can increase the tools of the people who are being displaced and the refugees who are really living outside the country and the host community that are hosting the refugees. Mm -hmm. If we can if we can uh, inject in the technology in these places, these children, people Almost can like invest Almost like M-Pesa in Kenya yes. or something, because that, that was a big yes. leapfrog for entrepreneurs yes. there. Yes, yes, yes. Entrepreneurship would be another way, you know, uh, to really uh, educate a, a young refugee person without moving them from a place to another place. They can be in Kakuma refugee camp, mm -hmm. and they can have classes where they can interact with people who are well experienced in the entrepreneurial world, you know, and this, Technology can really help a lot, in my opinion, especially in my time when I, was in, when I was a refugee, I didn't go to school. I woke up in the morning and I just sit there and kicking dust and... How long were you, you a know? child soldier for? Well, our uh, civil war broke out in 1983. Yeah. And, uh, the second and civil yes, war. Yeah, I stayed in there for a good 10 years between refugee camps and liberate, uh, liberated uh, areas in the Upper Nile, the state in South Sudan. Mm -hmm. So being a child soldier was early 1991 because uh, the civil war that was happening in Ethiopia that mm -hmm. displaced me to Sudan and then I stay in I stay in different area and liberated area and then I end up in a you you go back there a lot I mean I, you're I, I think you just <coughs> came back from Africa what do you think about the state of both your former homeland and sub-Saharan Africa right now what would you say it's as bad in many respects? Is it, um, you know, have there been market improvements? I know there's still in the news, certainly. Yes. Um, 
Well, recently I, I, I just came from South Sudan and also from Sudan, my previous country. I was in Sudan, I was doing a, a, a movie there for the past two months, since October until December. And then after that, I went home where my family is in South Sudan and Juba. Mm. And what I know is really happening there is, uh, is, you know, there's a lot of poverty. The poverty and insecurity is always a mother of creating a war among the people. Mm. And I can see that, you know, in, in, uh, in the struggle. But things are calm. South Sudan is still going through challenges themselves uh, with the uh, political environment is not negotiations not going yet. on yes, right now yeah. isn't there yes yes it's not suitable yet for everybody so but everybody's pushing slowly and slowly and uh, battles like this create a nation to be to be built so they should be welcome but they should be ended it so that people can move forward so Let's talk about so it's <coughs> new new day impact investing, and yeah. you are doing advocacy, corporate engagements. What 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 is the um, talk about how new day does things differently from where you sit? Well, you know, my work just began with the new day, and uh, we have a great team of people. What attracted you to doing it? Because you have a lot of people who want a piece of your time, I'm sure. <laughs> well, you know, work like this. Uh, you have to have like-minded people, and there's no other like-minded people like our CEO, or Doug. Doug and I, we met through mutual friends, and we have a lot of conversations for the past two to three years mm -hmm. about things that I was doing with the UNHCR, about things that I'm really doing on my personal level, and, and, and the work that they are doing as, as a new day. So we see a partnership between us uh, by bringing investors and, and also, you know, uh, and galvanizing the, the giant corporates, you know, to align them with the cost that they know they can really invest impactfully. And that moved me a lot, you know, when, when I heard it from, from Doug. I think about philanthropy and corporate social responsibility and investing. One of the challenges with investing is that investors want a return. Yes. And if you're judging some of these investments purely from a, uh, ROI point of view, it, it can create a bit of a short-term thinking challenge, can't it? Where um, does that build resilience, or does it does it make it more challenging to have a sustained commitment to these areas? Well, challenges they always going to be there, but but sometimes we have to start somewhere. Yeah, you know, to to really when once we really encounter challenges and then we we encounter them, knowing that you know. We, we're in a better position, you know? So my work is actually just to share my personal story mm -hmm. because in my story was, if people did not really invest in me, I would not have an opportunity to sit by with Diana and have mm -hmm. these conversations where we try to keep this issue on the center of our heads or our mind or our, or our stage. So we would not that, I would not have that opportunity to articulate myself, to express myself. I, I would not have opportunity to, to make a, a movie with high caliber people in Hollywood. Yeah. But because I had this opportunity where people invest in me, and then here I am, you know, and then I want the same opportunity for another child because I know I can bridge this gap between uh, the people who are living in refugee camp or a child who live in the Midwest, in Indiana, or Omaha, Nebraska, or here in New York City, which is mm -hmm. where I've been living for 16, 17 well, years. How? So I, I feel like I can relate, and my uh -huh. story can relate, and uh, this is, what kind of investing are you enabling through this? So is it investing in communities, investing in companies, you know, investing? So when you think about the, the nature of the investments, um, ESG is a very broad category. Yes. <clears throat> um, what do you think New Day is going to be doing differently from where you sit? Because obviously you're attracted to Doug's message. Yes, yes. Well, there's a lot of possibilities, and I think uh, the new days is, is, is going to do great in a, in, in a sense of bringing people, and you really get to see all the program that we have there. Mm -hmm. For instance, we have the animal conservations, and we have the, o the clean oceans, which is very important, and, uh, and, and, and we have the c clean drinking water. And development has started with these things. Mm. If clean drinking water is accessible to everybody, you're going to go to sleep not thinking about drink what I'm going to be drinking tomorrow morning when I wake up 
I don't think about that for as long as I've been living here. But if I go to, to my country in South Sudan, that's the day that I'm going to go to sleep where I didn't shower, maybe I was walking in the sun. And then the water that I'm going to be drinking is, I'm not sure where they're going to be coming from because they may not be clean. And that's not a development. So New Day will help in the sense of this small causes, you know, for people to invest in them, having clean drinking water, and also having a, that would really help build facility for young children to learn. Education, you know, is a very important thing. Well, it's so. interesting to think about the shift from thinking about it from charity to investing. You know, I think even that shift alone, but um, it's hard to get some of these issues on the radar, especially, you know, as Americans, I, I don't think our global coverage is often as strong as some other parts of the world. How, how do you how do you feel? Uh, what are we missing right now from where you sit as somebody who goes back and forth to Africa a fair bit? Um, is there anything we should be doing different? Are there pockets of opportunity or problems that just simply should be on the radar and are not? Yes, I mean, that's, that's, uh, again, uh, Diane, there's a lot of things that we can do as an American people. And because when you talk about America, and then you don't have to be born to be an American. You don't have I to be born I was, and I'm, I'm an immigrant, yes. yeah. <laughs> you can be an American even if you are not born from here. Yeah. And then given the fact that I came to the United States over 30 years ago now, we have a huge community of diaspora here in America, in all the 50-something states here. They are educators, and then uh, they are Americans. And these people can be a bridge to really influence things in their own communities, in their own countries, you know, by taking the American value that they have, because they have that, mm. you know. And this could be another way, too, for, for Americans to really see themselves in these places. You know, one of the challenges we're seeing all this I call it strongman politics, I guess, around the world, which makes investors nervous. So when times are tough, a lot of investors tend to sort of stick domestically and yeah. not look internationally. What would be your message around that? Because, you know, one of the challenges is these frontier markets impact investing tends to be risky investing. Yes, but I, yes, I think investors, yes, sometimes too, you know, you have to take a risk in these places. And that's where the opportunity are, you know, and, uh, and then you should not really, you know, tighten up. I think people should loosen up and really uh, try to go and invest, you know. If, you, if, if investment doesn't make a, a difference in a place where people are struggling and, and then they're just living in a peaceful way, and then that's not an investment in itself. I remember in your book you talked about the racism you encountered that was surprising when you came here. Do you think the the racial conversation has changed a lot with whether it's George Floyd or, or more awareness in terms of the next generation or what do you think about that in terms of Well in the nineties when I was coming up in Bloomington, Indiana, we have uh, our own challenges with our own uh, rivalry, especially in the basketball world, where we were, where we were competing mm. with each other. So, and um, yeah, things change. It's, it's, it, I think there's more division than than back then. Yes, I mean, racism, racisms and tribalisms, all of these things are happening all across the world. So no one will ever really uh, say we're going to end them. True, we always use the word tribal in Africa, <laughs> yes. but it's very, tri I mean, it's U.S. <laughs> is about as tribal as you can yeah. get at this yeah, yeah. point, right? But finding people that you can work with from all walks of life, it, it, the opportunity is there too. So, so you're going around talking to companies, such, is ESG the window in to getting people to support communities like South Sudan? Is that the best way to bring in the investment? I, th I think, yes, I, I, I think the best way to, well, cause when you talk about South Sudan, you're talking about a new nation full of young people, you know, and young people uh, are, are the engines of the nation, if you think about it. The billion consumers in Africa, the old, right? Yes, the market is massive over there. Yeah. You can produce anything there, and also the market is there at the same time.
You don't even have to go far to go and look for markets. And, uh, but these people need tools, you know, need tools to help themselves. They need tools to really create an environment where they can really produce things that can, 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 can really help one another all across. Partnership, you know, very important, you know. And um, yeah, I tend to really focus my energy on that collaboration and strategic partnership, you know, it's with a lot of grassroots uh, organizations, working directly with the... Well, you're an artist, an actor, you know, you're an entrepreneur, um, author. What, <clears throat> how, do you, how has your mindset shifted? When you think about your own personal sense of mission now, is it different than it was even 10 years ago, that experience of working with UNHCR? What, Absolutely. What's next for you? <laughs> what's next for me? Well, that's a, that's a lot You're of You're still things. acting. I'm still acting, yes. When the opportunity comes, I don't turn it down. And, and when we make films, and then they have to align with the things that we try to do, you know? The current movie that I did, you know, is, is about my country splitting into two nations, you know? It's, Was it's, that the best thing, to basically accept that there had to be a South Sudan in order to stop the civil war. Well, now this movie is going to really articulate that very well because it's going to depict things that really divide these people. So we can see. I want to end one thing that um, I've always been intrigued by with you is you studied psychology when you were at university. And you talk about PTSD, which is something a lot of people talk about today. Do we fully appreciate that? I mean, how just there's so much you know, post-traumatic stress syndrome with refugees, with people coming through the pandemic. <clears throat> you know, when you think about the investments, how much are we paying attention to that aspect of it? Not much. It's not much. People are not paying attention to mental health. In terms of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder in this area, whether in refugee, because refugee camps are a very violent place. Huh? They are not just peaceful place and then you are in another person country and you are in peace. No, That's, I've seen a lot of violence in the refugee camp more than I've seen mm. in my own country, you know, during the war. And those refugee camps, they're still violent. And then they create violence among the people and people kill themselves because first, you don't have opportunity. Second, you don't know what you are doing. You don't know if you're ever going to go to school. There's no... There's no place where you can learn. You just sit there like a concentration camp, mm. which is things that we read about back in, back in the day. They still yeah, exist, yeah. but now. So post-traumatic stress disorder is a, is a big deal among the refugees who are coming here, especially we, those who came here in the 90s. Uh, a lot of us lost our ways here in the United States. And most of them, the refugees that came with me, some of these guys, they've been deported here from America, deported back to South Sudan, and they have no idea uh, or how to live in an environment where they've never been before. Mm. Some of them even, they born here in the Midwest. But because they had trauma for so many years and then they didn't know how to really follow the law in this country, you end up committing a crime and then you end up in the prisons and then next things, you know, you are being exhausted for five, ten years in the prison, and then they put you in an airplane and take you where you don't even know. Yeah. Uh, even though it is your country. So I met a lot of those guys. They are there in South Sudan, and I know them here in the Midwest. I came with them back in the 90s, you know, but now they are grown people, and they have no direction. So integration of the refugees uh, will help in a sense where it should be facilitated to really... Uh, help them with the mental health, you know, so that if they understand and then they can integrate themselves in this well, society and, shifting, they can, and they can thrive. Shifting from a charitable mindset yes. to an investing mindset, right? That's yes. really, in essence, what you're doing right now is is seeing it more as an, op it's an opportunity for people, not just please help, right? Yes, yes, not just please help, you know? You invest in individuals, and then you will see the dividends at some point. Great. Thanks for joining us, Gary. Thanks for having me.